one. Now listen to Father Knows Best, transcribed, starring Robert Young. Welcome to Springfield and another half-hour visit with the folks in the White Frame House on Maple Street. Sit back and enjoy life with the Andersons, Kathy, Bud, Betty, Margaret, and Jim, as the head of this typical American household again sets out to prove that father knows best. There comes a time in every boy's life when he begins to feel that his britches are getting a touch too small for him, and it is high time he dons a more worldly pair of trousers. In the white frame house on Maple Street, young Bud Anderson has of late been feeling the pinch of his present existence, and has his eye on a more expanded life. He feels the need of such things as, well, for example, things like this. Mom. Yes, Bud, what is it? Can I get a flat top? Now, what in the world is a flat top? A haircut. Sort of like a butch, but not exactly... You mean where they shave your head? They don't shave you. What they do is... Absolutely not. But, Mom, they don't... The answer is no. Holy cow. You treat me as if I were a kid. Well, for goodness sake, what are you? I'm old enough to run my own life. Oh, now, Bud, don't get started on that again. Might as well put iron bars on my windows. Oh, Sure. Just where could you have it any better? A lot of places. Name one. Claude Messner says a guy can rent that room up over Mr. Engel's feed store for only $5 a month. How bad? Well, you can. And all you have to do is just sweep out the feed store every morning. I can just see you living upstairs over a feed store. Well, at least I could live my own life. Margaret, I'm home. Hey, there's Dad. I'm going to ask him about the haircut. Now, don't bother him with that. If he says it's okay, can I? I'm still against it. Dad, hey, Dad. Oh, hello, son. Where's your mother? Uh, In the kitchen. Dad, I want to ask you something. How much will it cost me? Just the price of a haircut, but what I want to know is... Daddy! Oh, why does she have to butt in? Daddy, can I earn my own money to... Get lost, shrimp boat. Oh, it turned blue. (laughs) Well, I can see that I'm home and everything is natural. (laughs) Now let's take up these big problems one at a time. Go ahead, Kathy. Ladies first, I guess. Oh, sure. It's always that. Well, Daddy, I want to... Ladies first. Bud, keep quiet. Go on, Kathy. Well, Daddy, I want to... She's no lady. Bud, let her talk. (laughs) Okay, okay. I'm going to get that room over the feed store. Well, Daddy, I want to earn my own money to go to a summer camp for girls. Can I? I'm heartily in favor of it. Now, how do you propose to raise all this money? Oh, that's easy. All we have to do is sell 30 boxes of Camp Girl Taffy. Oh, that's all, huh? 50 cents a box. I see. How many boxes do you want, Daddy? Well, I don't want any. I just thought maybe you'd buy some for a starter. Oh. You know, say, 20 boxes. <laughs> 20? Now, what would I do with 20 boxes of taffy? Is this conversation about over? As far as I'm concerned, it is. <laughs> well, how about just five, Daddy? Uh, I'll take two, and that's my absolute top. Thanks. I'll go get you taffy. Don't hurry. Dad... All right. Now, what is it, bud? Well, but I wanted to know... Oh, for Pete's sake. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'm sure it's for me. we better go upstairs, Dad. Wait. Maybe it's for me. Hello? Oh, yes, Ralphie. It's for her. Of course I do, Ralphie. Oh, let's go, Dad, before they get sickening. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I don't know, Ralph. Uh, just a minute. Father, may I go with Ralph to a lecture tonight? A lecture? On mentology. On what? Mentology. It's the very latest thing, Father. Everyone is taking it up, but everyone. Really? Hadn't even heard of it. (laughs) Come on, Dad. Ralph explained it to me. You mesh your subconscious mind with your regular mind. I must try that sometime. (laughs) And this really 
Ladies have such fantastic mental power that you can simply think your way to anything. Dad. Ralph says it's the greatest thing that ever hit civilization. Can I go? Well, if it's that great, I guess it can't hurt you too much. Go ahead. You're a dear father. Hello, Ralph. I can go. Dad. When? Oh, okay, I'll be ready. Bye. What time is it, Father? I'll bet I won't have time to do my hair. Can't you just mesh your subconscious and uh, <laughs> think a few curls into it? Oh, Father. You're so utterly pedestrian. <laughs> Well, I haven't been that before. <laughs> Dad. Yes, bud. Let's get right down to your problem. What is it that's bothering you? Well, I... Doggone it. Now I can't remember what it was. <laughs> I had no idea it was that important. Oh, yeah. I, I remember now. Look, Dad, I asked Mom if Jim, I could... Jim, where are you? In the den, Margaret. Holy cow. <laughs> well, are you two finished discussing Bud's flathead? <laughs> it's not flat head, it's flat top Well, whatever you call it doesn't much matter Because I'm still against it And I hope your father is too I haven't had a chance to ask him yet Jim, I was just thinking I've been canning berries all day And I haven't planned a thing for dinner Why don't you invite us to eat out tonight? I think that's a wonderful idea Dad Oh, yes, I, uh, I believe Bud has some sort of a problem. What is it, son? Well, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I'll get it. Hello? Boy, I give up. Yes, he's here. Uh, just a minute. Bud, come back here. It's for you. For me? How could that happen? I think it's Joe Phillips. Oh, thanks. Hello, Joe. No matter what it is, I can't do it. What kind of talk is that? Well, that's been going on for about a week now. Just a minute, Joe. Hey, Dad. Yes? Joe and some of the guys are going to take an all-day ride on their motor scooters out to the stone quarry, and they... Oh, were... dear. Well, now, wait a minute, Mom. That's right on the main highway, isn't it? Sure. Better road that way. Well, I don't know, bud. That's pretty dangerous out there. A lot of high-speed traffic. But, Dad, all the other fellows are going. Well, maybe so. But I don't want you driving that scooter on the highway. I knew it would turn out like this. Hello, Joe. I can't go. No, it's no use. I'm trapped. <laughs> no, so long. Now, Bud, that's not the right attitude. Well, everybody else gets to do what they want to, but not me. No, that's not true, Bud. Kathy wants to go out and sell some old taffy? Sure, go ahead, great. Well, that's... Uh... And Betty wants to go to some old lecture and get unconscious? Sure, <laughs> go ahead, great. Well, she's... And you uh... want to go out to some old restaurant? Sure, go ahead, great. Well, you're going too. I'm not hungry. Hardly. <laughs> now, look, Bud... I ought to move out of here and take that room over the feed store. Feed store? I can get it for just practically sweeping out the place. Yes, you could probably get your meals there, too. <laughs> ha, ha. Maybe someday you'll learn I'm old enough to lead my own life. Bud, come back here. Let him go. He'll cool off. Oh. Well, what are we going to do about him, Jim? Ooh. Why, nothing. Nothing? Sure, he'll work this out. I know how he feels. He just doesn't understand that what we're trying to do is best for him. I couldn't see that when I was a kid, either. But he's been going on like this for at least a week. What if he would try to leave home? Bud, leave home? <laughs> There's one kid you couldn't drive out of here with a bullwhip. Well, I know he always has been that way, but lately, I don't know. Well, I can tell you a real quick way to put a stop to such talk. All we have to do is agree with him that he's old enough to live his own life. Then help him make arrangements to move down to the feed store. And I guarantee you that'll be the last we'll ever hear of that. Well, maybe. I'll go up and have a little talk with him. Mommy! What is it, Angel? Would you like to buy some super keen, awful delicious, real snazzy taffy? Forty cents a box. Forty cents? <laughs> I thought it was fifty cents. I had to cut the price. I can't sell this old junk. 
<laughs> well, you certainly can't with that sales approach. How many have you sold so far? Well, counting the two you bought, I sold two. <laughs> well, at least you haven't lost ground. You better work on your mother there. I've got to run upstairs. Well, how about it, Mommy? You can buy as many boxes as you want. Well, I'm not exactly fond of taffy, but... Um... I'll get it. Watch out, Father. That's Ralph. I'll get it. I'll always wonder how she can tell who it is before she ever answers the phone. <coughs> Maybe her subconscious does mesh. <laughs> Bud, I want to talk to you. There's nothing to talk about. There might be. Daddy, can I ask Bud a question? I wouldn't bother him now. Hey, Bud, you want to buy some taffy? No! <laughs> See, Daddy, this stuff just won't sell. You better go change your clothes if we're going out to dinner. Okay. Maybe I can sell a few boxes in front of the restaurant. Bud, come on. Now open the door. What is it? Let me in and I'll tell you. Oh, that Ralph. He can be so pedestrian at times. <laughs> Ralph, too? Do you know what he did? No, and I have very little desire to find out. He asked me if it would be all right if George Hobson went along with it. And I said, just trying to be nice, you know, I said I'd be delighted. And he said, why are you so delighted? Are you just dying to have him go along? And I said... Princess, I, I'm a little busy right now. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing led to another, and first thing I know, he said, maybe you'd rather go with George and leave me home. And I said, maybe I would. Betty... Uh... Anyway, I have a date with George now. <laughs> Well, I'm glad that's straightened out. Better go get dressed now. Having any luck yet, Jim? Not much. Bud! Okay, okay. I'll unlock the door. You might as well stay and listen to this, Margaret. Okay, what do you want? Well, Bud, old man, your mother and I have been talking over what you said, and we've come to the conclusion that you're absolutely right. About what? About you having arrived at that point in life when you're able to go out on your own, to make your own decision, to live your own life. Yeah? We not only agree with you, but we're for it 100%. Now, wait, Jim. But you, uh, say you can get a room in the feed store? Well, uh, it's upstairs over it. I see. Well, now, just in case you don't get a job right away, you, uh... Might need a little rent money for the first few months, so here's uh, $10. Now do you want to buy some taffy, bud? <laughs> yeah, do you get out of here. Well, let's see now, bud. I guess that takes care of everything. Oh, yes, you'll need a suitcase. I'll, I'll get that small one of mine. Uh, no, Dad. Don't get the suitcase. Oh? Change your mind, huh? Heck no. I've got a lot of stuff. I'll need Mom's big old trunk. Turn to the Andersons in a moment. Are you in a hurry, mister? Are you in enough of a hurry to risk your life? Statistics show that by far the largest percentage of all highway accidents are caused by drivers who go over the speed limit. Speeding on the highway gets you nowhere except into trouble. The faster you drive, the less control you have over your car. The longer it takes you to stop, the greater strain you put on your tires, and the more likely you are to skid if the roads are bad. Way He's going to rent a room over Engel's Feed Store for $5 a month. How are Jim and Margaret reacting to this turn of events? Well, I think we can safely say the reactions are, uh, mixed. Like this. Jim, he's dragging that old trunk in from the garage. I thought you said if we agreed to let him go, he'd stay home. Now leave it to me. He won't get far with that old trunk. He'll be lucky if it holds together until he gets it upstairs. Hey, Dad, I got the trunk. Hold the door open. Now what's he dragging in? What are you hauling that trunk up the stairs for? Get out of the way, child ahead. <laughs> but you shouldn't be pulling that trunk up here. Well, I tried pushing it, but it wouldn't work. Grab that rope and stir it in, will you, Dad? For Pete's sake, what's the rope for? One end fell out of the trunk. <laughs> I had to tie it together. Where's Bud going? Kitten, uh, I know this is going to be a shock to you, but I want you to take it bravely. Bud is moving out. Can I have his room? <laughs> Ca 
Kathy, Bud isn't... Yes, he is. <laughs> That's Ralph. I'll get it. Maybe it's something in the way the phone rings. <laughs> Some kind of code that Ralph has rigged up. Where are you moving to, Bud? Never mind, Kathy. Bud's just... He has a fine room up over Engel's feed store, kitten. <laughs> we'll all drop down to see him now and then. Christmas, 4th of July, you know. Well, you folks can come down any time you want. It'll be okay with Mr. Engels. No, no, we don't want to clutter up your life. You'll be busy, sweeping and all. <laughs> Mommy, if Bud can move someplace, why can't I? <laughs> Now, Angel, Bud hasn't moved any place yet. He's just talking about it. Oh, he's doing more than talking. He's moving, aren't you, Bud? Oh, sure. Uh, uh, hand me that stuff uh, on the bed there, will you, Dad? Yeah. Uh, catcher's mitt. Uh, football. Bud, all you're putting in there is junk. You'll need handkerchiefs and clean shirts, towels. Oh, he won't need towels, Margaret. There'll be plenty of old feed sacks around the store. <laughs> What are you going to eat down there, bud? Eat? Oh, I'll, I'll find something. You better buy some taffy. <laughs> 30 cents a box. 30 cents? The bottom's really falling out of the taffy market. <laughs> that was Ralph calling again. Now he's trying to scare me. He says if I go to the lecture with George, that he'll go with Janie Liggett. And I'm supposed to be simply terrified. Hey, this trunk would make a neat playhouse. Get out of my stuff. Men are so infantile, so positively infantile. <laughs> Daddy, if we're going out to dinner, I want you to put on a dress. Is, Is that, that why Bud's packing the trunk to go out to dinner? <laughs> Bud's moving down to the feed store. What? I wonder if I should move or just take Bud's room. <laughs> Betty, you heard me. Kathy, go in and get cleaned up. We're going down to Emerson's Grill. Emerson's Grill? Oh, boy! What's so great about that? All they got down there is food. <laughs> Bud, you'd better come with us. No, uh, uh, I gotta get down to the feed store. Do a few things down there. That's right, Margaret. Bud's on his own now. He has things to do. We don't want to interfere. Well, I guess I got everything in the trunk. What do you mean? There's only a few things in the bottom. You really ought to fill it up. Make it heavy. Put in some old books uh, and a nice new broom. Mr. <laughs> Angles might help you carry it up to the room. You want to make a good impression on him. Well, I, I, I got everything I need, I guess. Jim, uh, come into our room a minute. What is it, honey? I'll be going, I guess. Just a minute, bud. Come in here, Jim. Now, Margaret. Dear, we can't let him start out like this. He's going to do it. No, he isn't. I wish you'd stop worrying. That's exactly what's making him go on like this. I was a boy once myself. I know so well what's going through his mind. He wants us to plead with him to stay. Well, let's do it. No, honey. <laughs> if you do, it'll make him all the more determined to go. Now, please, let me handle this. Well, if you ask me, I think you should put your foot down. A boy his age... Just leave it to me, Margaret. I'm going... Mother, what's going on? Has Bud gone completely daffy? I don't know. Ask your father. Guess I'll be gone. Uh, <laughs> hold your horses, Bud. I can just hear my friends saying, where's your brother? And I have to say, oh, he's living in the feed store. <laughs> <laughs> Is Bud really moving, Daddy? Now, go finish dressing, both of you. I'll take care of Bud. See you later. Bud... He's got his trunk at the top of the stairs. If it starts sliding down, he's gone. <laughs> As if I didn't have enough problems with that Ralph. Ta ta. <laughs> live with him at the feed store? <laughs> I could sleep in the trunk. Oh, for heaven's sake. But I want to see you before you go. Okay, but hurry up. I'm going. Now, the rest of you finish dressing. We're going to leave for dinner in ten minutes. Come on, Margaret. But, but Jim... Don't worry. I'm going to show you how to handle a boy. 
I have this whole thing planned out, so go along with me. Agree with everything I say. Well, I hope you know what you're doing. I do, believe me. Well, all uh, packed and ready to go, are you, bud? Yeah, I got everything. Well, that's fine. I'm sorry to see you leave, but your mother and I have talked it over, and we've decided that it'll do you good to get out and make your own way in the world. Well, a guy's got to live his own life. Yes, I suppose you're right. Well, goodbye, bud. Look in on us if you ever buy this way. <laughs> oh, sure. How are you going to get your meals? Margaret, it, it might be a good idea, bud, to take a hot plate along in case you want to cook your meals in the room. I don't suppose you have a kitchen. Kitchen? You probably should take some canned things along. Yes, canned soup is good. And if you don't have electricity, you, you can always eat it cold. <laughs> cold soup? Margaret. Oh, I'll have sandwiches and stuff. Oh, sure. There's nothing like a peanut butter sandwich for breakfast. <laughs> and a can of water. Can? Well, you probably won't have glasses at first. You can drink out of the empty soup can. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, Margaret, remind me to wire Mr. Foster up at the Virginia Lakes Resort. I reserved a cabin for five this summer. I'll have to let him know there'll only be four of us. Yes, yeah, that's right. Oh, Mr. Foster will miss going fishing with you, bud. Oh, gee, uh, I, I might be able to, to get away for a week, maybe. Oh, no, you'll be sweeping out the feed store every day. <laughs> oh, maybe I could get uh, Claude Messner to do it for me. No, no, we don't want to clutter up your life. Well, goodbye, son. Your mother and Betty and Kathy and I have to be on our way to the Emerson Grill. Well, Dad... We don't uh... want to be late for that good pot roast. Brown gravy and mashed potatoes. <laughs> apple pie. Jim. Gee, Dad. Uh... And we don't want to hold you up. I know you want to get down to your room. <laughs> Open your can of soup. <laughs> Jim, please. Well, Dad, come to think of it. Uh, telephone, I'll answer it, I'll answer it. The poor boy. It had to be done that way, Margaret. He's ready to stay home now. You couldn't have handled it any other way. I'm ready. Where's old bud? Gone to the feed store? No, I think your brother's changed his mind, kitten. Oh, darn it. What did he have to do that for? It was just getting exciting. <sighs> I don't know. Sometimes I think I don't know anything about children. I'm ready. Where's Bud? Oh, he's not leaving after all. Daddy talked him out of it. Well, thank goodness. Where is Bud? Is he still on the phone? He isn't down here. The phone is hung up. Well, where'd he go? Jim, come downstairs. Find Bud. Oh, Margaret, he probably went in the kitchen. That's one thing about Bud. He's never lost. You can always find him in the kitchen. <laughs> He's not in the kitchen. Who left this note on the hall table? It's Bud's handwriting. What's this? Jim, Bud's gone. Gone? Did he go? Good old Bud. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this note. I'm leaving, never coming back. You will never see me again. Father, I thought you talked him out of it. Well, Jim, don't just stand there. We've got to find him. I, I can't believe he... You practically pushed him out of the house. I did not. <laughs> Betty, you and Kathy go out and look for him. Uh, we'll search the house. <laughs> Betty, you go south, and Kathy, you go north. How far shall I go? <laughs> Make a circle. How big a circle? Should I call Ralph? Call Ingalls Feed Store. Betty, you go outside. I'll do the phoning. Who's blowing that horn? Confound it. Who's in our car? Let's go. I'm hungry. <laughs> Bud. Thank heaven. Wouldn't you know it? Sitting in the car waiting to go and eat. <sighs> what a relief. Honey, what were you so excited about? <laughs> 
I told you he'd never... The Andersons will be right back. Safe, sensible driving means more pleasure and convenience from your car and shows consideration for your passengers and for others on the highway. Remember that while you're behind the wheel of your car, you are responsible for other people's lives. Remember what an accident can mean in pain and injury. And then slow down. Obey the traffic... Well, the five Andersons are all accounted for. The lure of the independent life over Engel's feed store has faded for Bud. And the family is solidly united once again and happily headed for Emerson's Grill. Like this. Bud, why didn't you tell us you were going out to the car? Where else would I go? That silly note on the hall table. What was the idea of leaving that? What a crazy thing. Never coming back. Or never see you again. Yeah, getting our hopes up all for nothing. <laughs> hey, what about that note, Bud? Nobody in his right mind would write a thing like that. That wasn't my note. Then whose was it? I answered the phone and it was Ralph. He told me to write that note for him and leave it for you. <laughs> that Ralph. What an utter child. <laughs> I wonder where he'll go. While he's never coming back. Hey, there's Engel's feed store. Say, that's an idea. Betty, call Ralph. Tell him to bring a broom. <laughs> Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. In our cast were Rhoda Williams as Betty, Gene Vanderpile, Ted Donaldson, Norma Jean Nilsson, Bill Foreman, and Don Stanley speaking. Father Knows Best, directed by Andrew C. Love, was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers. Enjoy further adventures of Robert Young and Father Knows Best in the July issue of Radio TV Mirror Magazine, now on the stands. Be sure to read this delightful story about Robert Young and his own family. Three times mean good times on NBC. More entertainment awaits you Friday when you tune to this station for the Mario Lanza Show, Inside Bob and Ray, and the Roy Rogers Show. Yes, remember all three on NBC. Tonight, it's Counter Spy on NBC.